Hey, so I'm going to do some recommendations for adult books and for young adult books. And these do have some warnings for them. They are going to have um, a little bit heavier um, messages. So this is definitely not a recommendation one for children. This first one I wanted to recommend um, is called Briar Rose. It's a novel of the Holocaust and it's by Jane Yolen. It follows our main character trying to find out the truth of her grandmother's life. She knows that she had lived in Poland. She know, knows that she had some sort of an experience um, in World War II. They are Jewish and so she's trying to track down what castle her grandma keeps talking about when she tells the story of Sleeping Beauty. She's trying to figure out who is this prince? What's happening? Why does her grandmother's story sound different when she tells it of Sleeping Beauty than other people? Why is it a mist that puts them to sleep and not the evil queen's spell? It's a beautiful story. Um, it's really moving and it's written in just such a way that you want to find out about it, but you're also the whole time just like, oh, I don't want to know. Um, it's definitely a heavy one. So if you're in the mood for a book about the Holocaust with a fairy tale woven throughout it, that's beautiful, then I would recommend Briar Rose by Jane Yolen. If you're looking for just a fantastic classic Holly Black book, The Cruel Prince is so much fun. It's set in fairyland. The fairies are not your happy, happy fairies that <laughs> spreading joy and love. They are dark. They are always trying to trick you. And they can't lie, but they can use the phrasing of their words to means something very different and I love this story because the main character Jude is just so tough she can fight and she is her own woman she has to deal with being a human living in fairyland and her vulnerability there because she has to be careful what she eats or what she what deals she makes and it's really fun it's a um, one in a, a longer series. The, la the latest book just came out to end it, and it's just fantastic. Um, so The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Um, Holly Black, I read this one, The Darkest Part of the Forest, before I had read The Cruel Prince, and this book is a, a standalone, but it's in the same universe as the other one, and so there's some things that hint to it in the other books, but um, I love this because it's Hazel is the main character and they live on the border of fairyland and there's a deal between the fairies and the humans and they'll take tourists but they won't mess with the people that live in the town and it's just a beautiful story that goes through um, what it's like living on the border of fairyland and what these these two characters are experiencing so it's a fun book if you're not looking to get into a more epic longer series you could just read this one on its own and do it, but, it, but I warn you, if you read this one, you're going to want to read the rest of it to find out. And there's a little romance in it, but nothing too, too tough. Um, this book is called Rules for Vanishing, and I love this book. I had never heard of it. The this, this description of this book hooked me, and I could not put it down. I can't stop thinking about it. So I want to read you the description of it, and it's really short, but I think you'll like it. Once a year, a road appears in the forest, and at the end of it, the ghost of Lucy Gallows beckons. Lucy's game isn't for the faint of heart. If you win, you escape with your life, but if you lose... So Sarah's sister disappeared one year ago, and only Sarah knows where she is. Becca went to find the ghost of Lucy Gallows and is trapped on her road. In the sleepy town of Briar Glen, Lucy's road is nothing more than local lore, but Sarah knows it's real, and she's going to find it. When Sarah and her skeptical friends meet in the forest to search for Becca, the mysterious road unfurls before them. All they have to do is walk down it, but the path to Lucy is not of this world, and it has its own roles. Every mistake summons new horrors. Vengeful spirits and broken, angry creatures are waiting for them to slip, and no one is guaranteed safe passage. The only certainty is this. The road has a toll, and it will be paid. Sarah knows that if she steps onto the road, she might not come back, but Becca needs her, and Lucy is waiting. So it is very dark, it is very gory, but it is fantastic. So if you want a story and you want to figure out the mystery, I love that the whole time you're trying to figure out what is going on and what happened, um, I would read Rules for Vanishing. So Marissa Meyer um, also wrote the Cinder Scarlet Winter Lunar Chronicle series, and I love that very much. 
I think a lot of people know about it, so I didn't include it in this one, but Heartless is a standalone book. It tells the story of the Queen of Hearts before she came became the Queen of Hearts, and I love Elsa Wonderland. I love the Queen of Hearts, and so this story was just wonderful. Um, you follow the, the character who starts out um, as a young girl, and you get to see what happened to make her in the end this awful, awful character. So Marissa Meyer does it with just a wonderful skill, and it does have romance in it, and it does make you um, follow her story and try to figure out what's going to happen, but I really, really like it. Uh, oh, ooh, so The Hazelwood, and this one is by Melissa Albert. Her sequel just came out to this one, and I haven't read it yet. I have it. I'm just so excited to read it. I also just don't want it to be over. <laughs> uh, this book is fantastic. I read this at the same time I read The Darkest Part of the Forest, and they both just felt so good together. And it's a mix between a modern day, you're living in a city life story, and then also fairy tale world. So the main character that we follow, Alice, is living with her mom, and she doesn't really talk to her grandma at all. Um, she's not really sure why they have to move all the time, they have to keep moving, and when she hears of her grandmother's death, they're supposed to go back to the mom's house to check it out, um, but before they can, her mom disappears, and so she has to figure out what's going on with that. There's beautiful imagery throughout it. It is dark, it is haunting, and I love it. <laughs> so if you want to know more about this one, I would definitely read this. And I will tell you when I read the sequel, I can't wait. This book, I really went back and forth whether I should include it or not because I feel like some folks are going to hate it or love it. I'm kind of in a weird place with this book. I feel like The Bone Witch, I can't stop thinking about the characters. I can't stop thinking about the story. But it takes a really long time to get there. So if you like really wordy, long details, trying to get to the point, then you would absolutely love this. If you want a faster payoff with a book, I would not recommend this series. It is a trilogy, and I think the second book is the best in this. The last book, you're just like, yes, tell me all about it to wrap this up. But this book is really slow getting started, but the idea of it is really cool. So there are people that are born with different magic, abilities and our main character T is born with the ability to raise the dead and she can raise people. She can also raise these things called devas which are basically these big monster creatures and there's different kinds and she goes into a lot of detail about each one and she's supposed to be getting trained to use her powers in the way that she that their magical society wants her to use them and she starts to question it she starts to think well, why are the rules the way they are is there more to them there's romance in it it's definitely a lot of romance near the middle and end of the series um it's epic it's sweeping i think it would make the most amazing movie i'll just dream that one day they'll do it um but it does take a really long time to get there so if you are like this is the kind of book that i started it and i left it for a probably about a year before I finished it, and then I finally was just like, no, you've got to do this, Mary, get in it, and, and I finished it, but um, there's a lot, a lot of detail in there, a lot of world building, but once you, you know, understand the world that you're building, it's, it's really fun, I mean, she's, re she's creating these monsters, like, raising these monsters up from the dead, and you're trying to figure out this mystery the whole time of, um, of what's happening, because it's told from two, two time periods, it's told um, in the present, from her perspective now that she's been exiled and then it's also told from her telling the story of what happened to lead up to that so you know at some you know somehow she ended up in the sea of skulls all by herself living in this cave and then you also know that before that she was this really young girl learning about her magic so really cool and it it does really stick with you this book came in my <laughs> my book box that i ordered and I love it. There's so much romance. It's like dark and brooding, but it's called The Shadows Between Us. The main character, uh, she's trying to trying to lure the, the king to love her, and it's been described by the author as a sl Slytherin romance. I would, <laughs> I would agree to it. She 
is pretty evil and the king's pretty evil and starting off knowing that you just can't help but love them and the back and forth that they do to get there so without spoiling anything I don't want to go into it too much but it's it's pretty fun I liked it a lot this is also a book that was in one of my book boxes that I got um and it's called Wo Woven in Moonlight. I enjoyed it because it had such a rich culture built into it. She has the ability to, to weave moonlight, to pull the strands of starlight and make it into a fabric. And it's got two sides that are fighting and she's on the side that you know, thinks that they're right, and it's been going on for years and years, and she gets captured by, or she ends up living, captured, imprisoned by her enemies, and she starts to question what, what are they fighting about, and um, there's romance, there's a character in here, kind of like a Robin Hood type character that's causing trouble for the one side, and it's just so fun. It's in the book it describes it as a lush tapestry of magic, romance, and revolution. And they are right. It is fantastic. I love it. And then these last recommendations I wanted to make are fairy tale kind of, but with a much, much, much darker tone to them. And so this first one, it's Neil Gaiman and Lorenzo Matodi. I don't think I'm saying that correctly. Hopefully I am. But it's a retelling of Hansel and Gretel and the art in it is so dark and spooky. So like here's one. And the more you look at it closely, the more you're like, ah, what's happening? But I really love this. It, t it does a great job telling the story in a new way with, with new art. Definitely not a kid's version. And I also, kind of in that same series, um, Neil Gaiman wrote Snow Glass Apples, and it is really spooky. It's got, um, a, it, it has some, definitely some adult pictures in here that I did not like, but I did like the art in it. So there, there should be, you know, warnings in it about adult content and some abuse and some other things. So this would definitely only be for adults, but, um, it is, really fun. Like, it's got some pretty fun imagery in it. And I don't want to spoil the story for you, but, um, you know, definitely this would be for adults and trigger warning. The next one I want to recommend is called The Sleeper and the Spindle, and it is beautiful. I love this story. This is the one that got me into looking at different kind of almost graphic novel art for it. Um, it is... It has a main character that's a queen that is just so strong and powerful. She's, she's got, look at, check this out. On her horse, she's got a skull trailing behind her. I mean, it's really cool. And then uh, the details in here. So it's a Sleeping Beauty story, but it's got a queen trying to figure out what's happening with it. And I love it. I love this one so much. And then the last one that I wanted to recommend to you for this um, adult recommendations is Through the Woods. I had never heard of Emily Carroll before, but as I was starting to try to dig into some different graphic, graphic novels that had fairy tales in them that were a little bit more dark, she came up. And they are very short stories that have different... They're, I mean, they're just little story after little story in there with these beautiful just art in there. And they're gothic at times, they're fairy tale feeling at times. I love them because they're not overly gory, but the ideas of the stories are so so just creepy and wonderful. Um, so she does have a website where she posts more of her stuff. So if you weren't sure if you wanted to buy buy the book or not, you could just you could just look at her website and check it out, but I really enjoyed it. So it's five mysterious, spine-tingling stories to follow the journeys into and out of the eerie abyss. And it's, it's a, good, a good one. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, adios.